Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind. Guess what I got today? I'm pretty sure every single one of you know exactly what I'm about to say, because I've said it before, and most likely, or very likely, I'll be saying it again. Good freaking news, everyone. Oh yes, I see. Good news, everyone! I got some more pro-Trump, anti-communist revolutionary news. More stacking victory every single day. I mean, the wins, the W's, keep stacking like a stack of freaking pancakes. Now, all we're missing is the dash of syrup and cherry on top at the end here. That, of course, would be the beautiful culmination of a Trump resurgence in 2024. Well, folks, every single day that passes by, the more convinced I am that it is happening. It seems as though it's borderline inevitable at this point. We've covered the Trump surge across the board, but one place where I wasn't expecting to cover a Trump surge is in Democrat strongholds New York and California. Yep, you heard me right. That's not fake news. Trump is surging across the board even in deep blue Democrat strongholds. I'm I'm just gonna leave it at that we got some stuff to get into so let's roll the tape all right friends so let's do what we normally do let's compare and contrast we've got some numbers coming out here here's a head-to-head -head matchup in california 2024 general election between joe biden and donald trump joe biden currently holding 50 percent in a one-on-one -on -one matchup with trump at 37 that's a 13 point lead you might be asking well how is that a good thing well very simply because if we take a look at the 2020 presidential election in the state of california joe biden won by nearly 30 points. Look at the numbers here. He had basically double Donald Trump's votes at 11.1 million to 6 million for Trump. That's a 30-point lead. Well, apparently that 30-point lead has shrunk to now a 13-point lead. Joe Biden theoretically down 15 points while Trump gains a couple. You know, I keep calling it the Trump surge, but, you know, as I've said in many of my videos, it feels more like the Biden bundle, like the Biden tank. The guy is down, possibly, hypothetically, Hypothetically, based on one poll, nearly 15 percentage points in the state of California. That is freaking huge. And it doesn't end there, because here we have the state of New York. I mean, we're going from Democrat stronghold to Democrat stronghold. These are places where the Democrat candidate, especially in a general election season, is expected to win by at least a 20 point margin, at least, and arguably close to 30. But look at the numbers. New York's a place that's been really astonishing as of late. Joe Biden's at 46%, and Trump is at 36%. Meaning Joe Biden is leading in the state of New York based on Siena research data. And this is only with registered voters by a measly 10 points. Let's do what we did for the last one. 2020 United States presidential election in the state of New York. Joe Biden won by 23 points. Supposedly, that lead is cut in half, slashed in frickin' half by more than half as Joe Biden leads by a measly 10. This is a buildup off of what we saw in the 2022 election. Folks, without New York State, Republicans wouldn't be in the position that they are in, currently controlling the House. At least not to the extent that they are. If it wasn't for a couple New York districts, New York State districts, flipping red in the previous midterm election, we'd be living through a very different current political reality. But New York, of all places, is shifting. It shifted in the previous election, where even Lee Zeldin gave Governor Kathy Hochul a run for her money, and now it seems to be following that trend even in a presidential election. Usually, there's going to be a difference. You could have a Democrat stronghold elect some Republicans, elect even a Republican governor, Republicans to school board positions and state attorney positions. You know, that's not exactly unheard of. Midterm elections tend to have quite different results, so we could have very easily went from 2016, where Republicans had a good election season and Democrats just couldn't get people to the ballots, a little one-off shift that didn't exactly translate into the next election, into the general election, the presidential election. But that's not what we're getting. It's not just a little outlier. It's not just a little shift that lasted one little midterm. It's a big, massive, building trend and threat to Democrat rule or reign in the Big Apple and in New York State. They are in trouble. Crime has gone through the roof, especially robberies and random assaults on the streets, things that affect actual civilians, like I keep saying in those videos where we cover New York crime and Eric Adams continues to point at shootings as if that's the only metric that matters. Now we have the immigration crisis. So we have a crime crisis. We have the immigration crisis. There's a tax collection crisis as many of the state's wealthiest 
taxpaying citizens have fled to places like Miami and others. New York is facing a three-pronged crisis, all brought on by Democrat incompetence. Now the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, again, let's mention him again. His campaign is under criminal investigation. You know, it continues to pile on, and New York voters are looking around them, like frickin' John Travolta, wondering what the hell is going on. And it seems as though what's materializing, the kind of after effect, is finally people asking themselves that very important question, why in the heck do we keep voting for Democrats even though things keep getting worse for us? Finally, people are asking themselves that question. And finally, people are finding the confidence, not scared, not being intimidated. And it seems the answer that people are saying to the question that is being asked is, well, maybe Donald Trump wasn't that bad. Maybe we should give him a shot again. Maybe we shouldn't just vote blue no matter who for decade upon decade expecting things to change, even though all we're doing is enabling this massive Democrat-controlled, corrupt oligarchy class to rule our city. It seems as though people are finally understanding the importance of a political pendulum. You can give Democrats power if Republicans are out of line, but once Democrats do the same, you gotta vote them out and shift it right back. It's that political pendulum phenomenon. We're never gonna live in a world where it's just pure Republican rule forever. I mean, that would be a nightmare. What would happen in a situation like that is the Republican Party would become all-powerful and unstoppable, and it would be the same thing if Democrats were elected every single year. And so it's kind of a required, you know, cleansing process of the political system to shift from party to party. It's how you hold people accountable. Well, in Democrat cities for the past however many decades, there's been no accountability. There's never been a threat of Democrats losing their power in these cities. Now, it seems as though it's finally happening. And if you take a look at the history of voting patterns, I mean, California used to be a Republican state during the times of Reagan. Generally, what we end up seeing is red states eventually shift blue and blue states eventually shift red. You know, I guess you could argue Florida was kind of like a little bit of a, you know, blue state for a while there. It's gone totally red. Texas, in a way, is kind of shifting blue. I think that's happening. And now it's possible that we're seeing blue strongholds, like New York and California, slowly shifting red. Will they become red strongholds in the near future? Probably not. But it's likely that Republicans start to make gains in very important districts. It's likely Republicans start picking up more House seats. It's likely they regain the Senate. It's likely they make grounds down ballot thanks to these Democrat strongholds shifting over. And who knows, maybe one day, eventually, some of these blue states will be red. Maybe one day the state of Virginia will become a red state. It seems as though that's probably happening. Maybe Nevada, maybe even Arizona. It's hard to say exactly, but it does seem as if there is a political shift happening. It's possible that it's just an anti-Biden thing, that people are just so sick of this old, decrepit, confused, dementia-patient old man. I'm sure that's probably the majority factor, but I highly doubt that's the only factor. People are coming to the realization that we can't just print money endlessly. We can't just, you know, mold our economic and public spending philosophy to just subsidize people's lives and of oh, the poor people. That's not a legitimate political philosophy. That's simply a fast track towards bankruptcy. It seems as though people are realizing that maybe fiscal responsibility is important. Maybe borders are important. Maybe we should run our government like we run our home with basic common sense and, I don't know, a budget. I think it's happening. Everything seems to suggest that it's happening. I guess now it's just kind of a matter of time. Let's just let the phenomenon play out and let's see where it brings us. Right now, it seems as though the writing on the wall is the total, unmitigated collapse of the Democrat establishment. You know, maybe electing Joe Biden was a bad for a good. You know, I think that's the glass half full perspective that I applied to this ridiculous administration almost immediately. I've been saying that for the last two and a half years. Maybe Joe Biden getting elected is a good thing. Maybe it's going to be a little four-year blip where people are finally forced to take that red pill. And maybe it's going to lead to a beautiful conservative age where we start to fall back on common sense principles and traditional values. Maybe he's exactly what we needed, the catalyst, to start pushing that pendulum back in the other direction. That's the vibe that I'm getting. But of course, we'll just have to see. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, friends, and I will see you on the next one.